Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Mountain Ash Photography. Join me tonight as we are going to be going over a little bit of some new features that just recently came out from Seastar and it is going to make things a lot more fun especially if you want to capture multiple targets in a night where you can just be sounding asleep away and you have your entire run completely automated now thanks to the new plan mode that is now available for all C-Star users. So we're going to go through a little bit of that tonight as we do have a little bit of some clear skies, even though it is absolutely frigid cold outside. We're going to go ahead and try to brace the elements out there. And we're going to be using tonight, I'm just going to be using my C-Star S30. I've been loving this one a lot, especially when it comes to you know, the portability of this, because this thing is much smaller than the S50 in itself. And I think, you know, in my personal opinion, if you're a guy that does deep sky astrophotography, this is the way to go, man. It is cheaper, has a little bit of a better camera, a little bit wider field of view, and the best part is, it's so portable. If this thing is nice and small, you just fold out the tripod, plop it right on down, turn it on, and you're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and put this outside, and we're going to look inside of the app to see some of the new features that have come out recently from Seastar. I'm not going to be switching to a different camera here so you can actually see my phone here. So we do have the S30 all hooked up, and you're going to see some new features here because we are now on firmware 4.0. This is the latest firmware that you can download right now from the... Apple Store or from Android, but we're going to definitely go over the, this new feature here. And there's a new menu on the screen, and that is plan. We're going to go over to that plan option. Now, I have been messing with this already, and I have been uh, very impressed with this, too. It just makes things so much easier. So you can go ahead and just create a new plan like so, and you can name it whatever you want. And we can just say for, you know, YouTube video, this is gonna be the name for this plan right here. And you're gonna be seeing a timeline from the start of, you know, sunset to sunrise. And of course you have the sky atlas here and you can just go through on the sky atlas and just add, you know, whatever targets you wanna do. So like, we're gonna start off with like Messier 32, I mean, uh, Messier 42. Place that right there in the middle, and we can go ahead and hit this little add button. This is going to give a time frame of how long you want to shoot this for, and you can see the duration. It says like five hours, thirty-six minutes, and thirty-three seconds. And you got this little slider here that you're able to shoot this object. So, like for instance, we can zoom in by doing like a pinch scroll, and we're just going to do something simple as you know, fifteen minutes per target just so it's nice and quick. So 50, 20, I'm gonna do like right there. And you have this little option here, LP filter, that is your light pollution filter. If you wanna have it off and on, you can set that there. And there is a little check mark. You hit that check mark, and then you have that already set for your list. So then, you know, you wanna go somewhere else, like for instance, go over towards the Rosette Nebula. Place that in the center here, but for this target here, it, the field of view is not wide enough to capture the entire, you know, Rosette Nebula. You can do the uh, framing method inside of the plan as well. So if you do the framing, just have it a little bit bigger so you can finish the, uh, you know, the whole entire field of view, which takes roughly about 40 minutes to complete. So we're going to set this for an hour. I'm going to go ahead and add this in. So it'll be switching over roughly around 1910 local time. And we're going to have this set to, you know, just an hour. Make sure the light pollution filter is on. Hit the check. Okay, so after that, let's go over and capture, let's see. Let's high enough in the sky around that time. We can do Messier 81 and 82. This one here, we can fit both of them in the field of view, and as well as the Garland Galaxy. We can go ahead and add that one. And we can set this one for, let's see, we can just do like a half hour. 
nothing too crazy. Make sure light pollution filter is off. You hit that check mark and then your plan is ready to go. So if you close this out, now you have your plan ready to go. All you have to do is just click on execute and then it'll start off for you. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so now we have started our plan. We're going over to the Great Orion Nebula. It's doing through its little calibrations right now, the horizontal calibration, centering. We're doing an autofocus right now. This is just a very easy target to use right off the bat and let it do its thing because roughly at about eight o'clock here, local time, it's gonna switch over to our next target because this target here, I mean, it's Orion, it's a naked eye nebula, it's very easy to capture, and you don't really need a whole lot of integration time to have a wonderful image in itself. So it's about to do the auto enhancement right now. So it's taking the first exposure through, and it's going to pop up here. It's going to start auto stacking everything and making the picture just, you know, nice and pretty. Very, very easy over the next couple of minutes before switching over to the Rosette Nebula, which will be a mosaic version of it. And we will have a wonderful image out of that after about an hour. So I will see you back here just before it decides to switch over to the Rosette. All right, now we're approaching about the eight o'clock hour and it's going to get ready to switch over to our next target here. We're going to watch it basically live as it's going to be going over from the Orion Nebula over to the Rosette Nebula as soon as it finishes the last exposure when it hits around eight o'clock. So which is going to be any second now. And there's going to be a lot of cool new features coming out with the Sea Star series here soon. A major update that people have been really looking forward to. That Equatorial mode is coming at some point. Do not know a release date for this, but the next uh, uh, next app update will include the EQ mode, which is very, very exciting. And I'm going to also do a video on that as well, because I have yet to try any sort of like equatorial mode for the Sea Star to be able to do those much longer exposures. So, okay, now we're initializing the next target here. And that is the Rosette Nebula. So it finished whatever the image it was working on. Now it's going to go over to NGC 2244, or known as the Satellite Cluster. So it's going to do with plate solving. And it's also going to be doing the mosaic aspect as well for about an hour or so. Whatever time it collects the amount of, you know, integration from that time, it will save it, use it, and then switch over to the next target of however many you want. But... I want to make a big disclaimer right now for those who use some of the aftermarket products for the C-Star series, like I sell myself from my store and Alton Astro Prints, the Dew Shields. Now, as of this recording, there is no way to turn this feature off. So when you complete an entire plan on your C star, it will automatically go back to the home position where the arm is closed. Now there is different kinds of dew shields that are available for the C stars right now. You have the ones that just kind of friction itself right into the Jeptek lens, but the problem is they can get jammed. And if you're not out there at the same time, or if you don't have one that can pop off when it goes back to the home position, it can damage your system completely. I do have the pop up uh, solar, well, the pop off dew shields available in my store only right now for the S50s. They work wonderful when you have either an auto shut off or when your plan is done. It will pop right off safely and not cause any problems. I'm still working on the ones for the S30 right now since the dimensions are a little bit different because of the dual lens setup. So hopefully here soon we'll have pop-off dew shields for that. And I'll leave all the links in the description for where you can get those kind of dew shields down below. So this is pretty much a wrap up for right now of all the new features with the C-Star series. I can't wait until I can try out the equatorial system for this here at some point 
whatever. That's going to be an ETA for now. So if you like what you see, comment, like, subscribe, share the video with everyone else of, you know, how to use the plan mode and more exciting features coming up for the C-Star series. As always, thank you for watching, clear skies, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.